Welcome to lecture number four. In this lecture, we're going to speak about embouchure and I'm going to show you how to form the embouchure. But first, you're probably wondering, what is this woman saying? What is this word? I don't know. Embouchure. So the embouchure refers to exactly how we hold the mouthpiece in our mouth while we are playing. So it differs from instrument to instrument. So let's take a look at how we form the embouchure for the saxophone. In the previous lecture, I showed you how to place your reed on your mouthpiece. So you should have your neck with your mouthpiece and your reed and your ligature attached with you now. You will see that mine isn't set up yet because I want to take a few seconds and show you how quickly we normally do it when we've had some practice. This is how long it normally takes. So we wet the reed, pop it onto the mouthpiece, ligature goes over, I check the position, I'm happy and I tighten and there we go. So you'll have this with you now complete outfitted top part of the saxophone. And the reason we don't put it onto the saxophone just yet is that it's much easier to work with the neck. And this is really where we're going to be focusing in this lecture. So very soon we will just put this onto the body and then we will go from there. But this part, we're going to be focusing a lot on this top part. So the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to show you a useful trick that we use to determine exactly where we need to place our bottom lip on the reed. And as you will see in a moment, that is the first step in forming the embouchure. So what I want you to do is grab a piece of paper. It can be any little piece of paper that you have lying around. And we're going to push this piece of paper into the tip opening, meaning in between the reed and the mouthpiece. So you will see that the paper will slide quite happily into the tip opening and then at a certain point it's going to stop. So I want you to push the paper down until you are sure it's not going any further. And this is basically telling us where the reed is touching the mouthpiece and the tip opening has ended. Then we take a pencil and we draw a little guideline. So this line will be in line with the paper and telling us where the tip opening has stopped. Then when you've got that, we can just remove this piece of paper and you will be left with your guideline. So let's move on and I'll show you how this guideline is going to help you. Here we go. So the first step is to put your bottom lip over your bottom teeth. You're basically just making a cushion for the reed to lie on. Don't put too much of your lip over your teeth like this. You will see my lip is completely drawn in if I do that. You want to just pull it over your teeth enough to make a cushion and you want to be able to see the pink part of your lip. Then you're going to place your thumb onto the guideline that we just drew like this. And then if you turn it to the side, you're going to push that bottom lip all the way until you feel your thumb and that tells you exactly how far your bottom lip needs to go onto the reed. Okay, so you can see that my bottom lip is over my bottom teeth here and the reed is resting on my bottom lip. Then the second step is to place your top teeth on top of the mouthpiece. So no lip at the top, the teeth are going to be at the top. And don't think of it as a biting action. It's just resting on top of the mouthpiece. So the top teeth help to balance the saxophone while you play. And then lastly, it's easy. You're just going to seal your lips around the mouthpiece like a drawstring bag. So you've got your bottom lip in place, your top teeth on the top, and then you just seal your lips around. And that's forming the embouchure. Watch out for these mistakes. If you look at this picture, you will see on the left, I've got a perfect embouchure, but on the right, I've got way too much mouthpiece in my mouth. And if we play with too much mouthpiece in our mouths, we're going to get a big fat squeak. So in case you're wondering, this is not the sound that you want. And this is definitely not the face that you want to pull when you are doing this. The next no-no, is the opposite if I've got too little mouthpiece in my mouth. So once again on the left is the correct embouchure and on the right you will see my mouth is pulled back and I'm playing on the very 
tip of the mouthpiece. So what happens now essentially is I'm just squeezing the tip opening shut. And then you are simply left with this frustrating situation of not being able to get air into your mouthpiece. No-no number three is what we call a strawberry chin. You will see I'm bunching my chin and it looks a little bit like a strawberry, right? So you don't want to see this. The skin over your chin should be straight and relaxed. And if I play with a strawberry chin... Once again, not really what I'm looking for. And the last mistake to look out for is playing with a double embouchure. So a double embouchure means that instead of having your top teeth on the top of the mouthpiece, you are also covering your top teeth with your lip as you are doing at the bottom. So essentially you're playing with a double lip embouchure. So even though the sound is going to sound fine, you will feel that your top lip is going to hurt a lot because now the pressure that usually goes from your teeth into the mouthpiece is catching your lip in the middle of that. So all the pressure is going directly into that soft little sensitive part of your top lip and that's going to hurt quite a bit. Let's recap. Your bottom lip goes over your bottom teeth, not too much, just enough so that you form a cushion. Your top teeth go on the top of the mouthpiece and you seal your lips like a drawstring bag. Make sure the chin is stretched out and not bunched up and that the corners of your mouth are pulling slightly upward as if you are smiling and they're not pushing inwards. So don't worry too much about how exactly you are blowing at this stage. If you can just get to a point where you can hear that you're getting air through the neck and that you're not getting anything like that, which means you're biting the reed closed here. As long as you can just blow as if you're blowing through a straw and you've got the embouchure formed correctly, you will be fine. We're going to talk a lot about breathing and blowing in lecture seven. So it's coming up. But for now, all you can focus on is just blowing air through. And then when you're comfortable with that, you can start producing a sound. So now you're just going to blow a little bit harder every time until you feel that sound taking shape. So I'll recommend pausing for a while and just practicing this. Drive your neighbors crazy. Go all out until you feel completely comfortable producing a sound. So I will recommend using your thumb trick for the first week or two until you feel comfortable taking the mouthpiece into your mouth without using the thumb. So this is a good way to ensure that you don't have too much or too little mouthpiece in your mouth. So just check your line. And you go on like that and eventually you can just grip the mouthpiece without using your thumb. Okay, then if you feel comfortable, you can take the body of your saxophone. And as you know, the neck goes in the top here. We tighten the screw, not too much, just until it grips. And then don't worry about where to hold it yet, that's coming in the next lecture. But then you can just hold the body of the saxophone, you can just hold it around the bell here, that's easiest. And then you go ahead and you do the same thing. So bottom lip, top teeth, seal the lips around the mouthpiece like a drawstring bag, and blow. And then you should get this note. to keep it as solid as you can. Your sound might sound a little bit like this. Okay, so that comes from the chin here. So if you keep the skin nice and taut down here and you keep the chin stable, then that should even out your sound.
So you can hear as I change my chin, I'm basically bunching and then I'm pulling it out. And that's the difference in sound. And that's it for this lecture. You can keep your saxophone just like this and meet me in the next lecture and I will show you where you're going to be placing your hands and your fingers. Mm -hmm.